This is a quick video about Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that current is proportional to voltage and resistance in a resistive circuit. It doesn't matter if it's DC or AC voltage, but if it's a resistive circuit, Ohm's law applies. The Ohm's law triangle can help you calculate voltage, current, or resistance in such a circuit. In this demonstration, I've got a couple of 1000 ohm resistors and a 500 ohm resistor. And first, what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, a 1000 ohm resistor in a breadboard and put 10 volts across it. And so let's calculate what that current should be. We want to find out what the current going through that resistor is. Current, to calculate current, you would cover up this I here and you will have voltage divided by resistance. We know that we have 10 volts and we know our resistance is 1000 ohms, then we should have 0 .0101 0 .01 amps, which is also 10 milliamps. So I've gone ahead and put this resistor in here and we have a power supply right here. Actually, it has a current readout right there. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And that's going to give us the 10 milliamps that we just calculated right there. So that's the current through a 1000 ohm resistor at 10 volts. What would happen if you were to reduce that voltage to 5 volts? Well, first of all, if you were to reduce the, five, the voltage to 5 volts through the calculations, then that's actually going to cut your current in half. That should give you 0 0.005 amps or 5 milliamps. And you can easily do that here on the power supply, dropping that voltage down to 5 volts. And by doing that, uh, it has reduced our current down to 0 0.005 amps. So the current dropped in half when dropping the voltage in half. Let's go back to that original 10 volts now. And we're back up to the original 10 milliamps or 0 0.01 amps. What happens if we were to take that 1000 ohm resistor out of there and replace it with a 500 ohm resistor? According to Ohm's law, if you have 10 volts divided by a 500 ohm resistor instead of a 1000 ohm resistor, you should end up with 0 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps. So let's do that. Let's take the 1000 ohm resistor out and replace it with a 500 ohm resistor. As you can see, it increased the current to 0.2 amps or 20 milliamps. So that was a quick demonstration of basic Ohm's law. Lastly, a little bit about series and parallel resistance. Although technically not part of Ohm's law, it's important to know how different combinations of resistors and resistances affect the total resistance of a circuit. Some formula to remember for series resistance, the total resistance is simply equal to the sum of the resistors that you have in series. For parallel resistance, the equivalent of resistors in parallel, the reciprocal of that, which is 1 over RP is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R however many other resistors you have. So this right here would be the parallel resistance, the equivalent would just be 1 over 1000 plus 1 over 1000. And the reciprocal of that would be your parallel, your equivalent resistance. Now there's a shortcut for that only when you have two resistors in a circuit. It doesn't work for any more than two resistors. That's a lot easier. So in this case, you would have RP is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So let's do some examples here. In this example here, we have two 1000 ohm resistors in series. 
the total resistance should be R1 plus R2 plus however many other resistors. You only have two, so it's R1 plus R2. In this case, it would just be 2,000 ohms. So let's go ahead and measure that because we happen to have two 1,000 ohm resistors in series. And that gives us 2,000 ohms, which is what we expected. Next case, two 1,000 ohm resistors in parallel. If we were to calculate it the long way, you would have 1 over RP is equal to 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 1,000, which is equal to 2 over 1,000, or 1 over 500. The reciprocal of that is equal to 1 over 500. So RP is equal to the reciprocal of that, which is 500 ohms. Okay, so if we were to put these two resistors in parallel rather than in series, we should get 500 ohms. So let's do that and let's measure it. And we got almost exactly 500 ohms. Great. Now the other way to calculate that, the shortcut, since we have only two resistors here, would be RP is equal to R1 times R2, which would be 1,000 times 1,000 is equal to a million. It's a million divided by R1 plus R2, so you got a million divided by 2,000. And 1 million divided by 2,000 is 1,000 divided by 2, or 500, equals 500 ohms. So that's another way to calculate that. Now, a series and parallel circuit, it's not uncommon to run across something like this. You're going to have, you would have to do this in two steps. Well. Uh, we already did the calculation for this right here because we have two resistors right here effectively in parallel. And we know that based on this example here that this is equal to 500. So from here, that's 500 ohms. From this point right here, that's 500 ohms. So this is really the equivalent of this. And you have another one here, R1, which is 500 ohms. This is RP. Now the total resistance then would just be, based on the series resistance formula, would be this one plus this one since they're end to end. 500 plus 500 is equal to 1,000 ohms. So if we were to put this circuit together here, we should get a thousand ohms. So let's do that. We already have two 1,000 ohm resistors in parallel right there. And we're just simply going to connect a 500 ohm resistor to the end of that. And we're going to measure this right here. So we should end up with about a thousand ohms. or exactly a thousand ohms in this case. So that's a little bit about series and parallel resistance. Uh, it's very important to know how to do that, how to calculate the equivalent resistance of different combinations such as these. So let's go ahead and do some Ohm's Law problems now. Question. You have five volts across a 200 ohm resistor. A. What is the current flowing through the resistor? What is this current here? Let's start by drawing the Ohm's Law triangle over here. Where V is equal to I times R. We need to find I, so what we can do is just cover up the I here, and then we'll have V over R. 
So in order to find the current flowing through the resistor, you have 5 volts divided by a resistance of 200 ohms. And that should give you 0 0.025 amps, which is also 25 milliamps. B, what happens if the current to the resistor, what happens to the current through the resistor if you double the voltage? Well, since Ohm's law is about proportionality, if you were to double this voltage, you simply double this here, and you have 10 volts divided by 200 ohms. And this should double, which will give you 0 0.05 amps or 50 milliamps. You're doubling the current. What instead would happen if you were to double the resistance? So if you go back to the original 10 or 5 volts here, so you have 5 volts across a 200 ohm resistor, and originally you had 0 0.025 amps. If you were to double the resistance, what would happen? Your current, again, is I equals V over R. You're back to your original 5 volts, but now you have 400 ohms. What is your current now? Originally, it was 0 0.025 amps. Well, 5 volts divided by 400 ohms is 0 0.0125 amps or 12.5 milliamps. Since the resistance is in the denominator, increasing the resistance reduces the current. Increasing the voltage increases the current. Next question. You have a light bulb that has a resistance of 10 ohms. You connect it to an unknown voltage source, but you know that the current going through that light bulb is 2 amps. How do you figure out what this voltage is across that light bulb? Well, this is one of the simplest calculations in Ohm's law. Voltage here is equal to current times resistance. So you would have voltage is equal to current times resistance, which is 2 amps times 10 ohms is equal to 20 volts. Very simple. Part B. The more current that goes through a light bulb, the brighter it gets. The less current that goes through a light bulb, the dimmer it gets. The question is, if you were to change this bulb from a 10 ohm bulb to a 5 ohm bulb, would it get brighter or dimmer? Well, that's really easy to figure out. You know that more current makes a light bulb brighter and less current makes the light bulb dimmer. So let's just calculate the current relative to the original current. Originally, we have 2 amps. So if you change this to a 5 ohm bulb, what does that do to the current? Well, I is equal to V over R. So you have your 20 volts that we calculated over here. 20 divided by 5 ohms, and that's going to equal 4 amps. Now we have 4 amps. Originally, we had 2 amps. Since we have more current, the 5 ohm bulb is going to be brighter. Consider this circuit here. You've got a 1,000 ohm resistor, and you've got two 1,000 ohm resistors in parallel. What is the equivalent resistance of this circuit? Well, in order to find the, this, you are going to need to first find out what the equivalent resistance is of these two parallel resistors here. You could do it two ways. You could do it the shortcut way, which would be R2 times R3. Divide that by R2 plus R3, which would be 1,000 
times 1,000 divided by 2,000. That's going to be a million divided by 2,000. Get rid of these zeros here. It's 1,000 divided by 2 or 500 ohms. All right, so that's 500 ohms. You could do it the other way too, uh, using the formula, the uh, standard formula that was um, uh, described in the earlier in the video, but this is a shortcut way. So this right here is 500 ohms. This is 1,000. This is in a series with this 500 ohms. So you have a total resistance, RT, is equal to 500 plus 1,000 equals 1,500 ohms. B, what is the total current through the circuit? Okay, so now that you know the, re the total resistance of the circuit, the resistance here, looking this way, that the voltage source sees, we've now determined to be 1,500 ohms. So finding the current is very easy, just just Ohm's law. To find the current, you've got voltage divided by resistance, your voltage source here. So your I is equal to your voltage source, 10 volts, divided by what we found to be 1500 ohms, equivalent resistance. And that comes out to Six point seven milliamps or point zero zero six seven amps. Which is six point seven milliamps. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project as well as recommended bread boring equipment, best practices, and safety tips please go to breadboardcircuits.com.